Welcome to Oil and Gas. We are going to talk a little bit about apportionment and non-apportionment. And basically, this is just what happens when you have a lease and on a piece of land and you just sell part of that land. What happens then when there's oil development is the oil and gas that you produced shared with the two separate owners or does it just go to the owner of the portion of the land where the oil is produced. So key case here is this Jaffet versus McCray case from 1925. It's on page 642 in your book. What happened is that Fisher leased to producers oil company, then conveys to Keeble, who conveys just the south 10 acres to Jaffet. Oil company hits oil on Jaffet's land and this is where the non-apportionment rule is established. Court says if the land is subdivided after the lease, as it was here, so we have a portion of land, just the bottom 10 acres are sold to Jaffet. There is production just on the bottom 10 acres. The question is, should that be shared with everybody or does that all go to Jaffet uh, as holding those south 10 acres? And the non-apportionment rule says it is not divided or apportioned. It belongs entirely to the owner of the track from which it's produced. The court considers whether it should be shared and says, you know what? The way the rule of capture works, the oil belongs to whose land it's, uh, it's under, that's produced from. And, you know, if what we really wanted here was to share and share alike, why would you even specify that it was the South 10 acres? Why not just give Jaffet a 10 acre interest in the entire track? Here it's a 15 acre track, just give them two thirds of that uh, general mineral interest. They specify the South 10 acres because they wanted to say, if it was on the South 10 acres, it all goes to Jaffet. So therefore non-apportionment is the rule. I should say, I think that's kind of a funny uh, Texan approach to land, you know, the suggestion of the court is the only reason you would have specified the acreage is because you cared about the oil and gas produced from that particular 10 acres. You know, in other parts of the country, you might say, well, maybe there's something else you liked about that 10 acres. Maybe it was prettier. Maybe it produced a different kind of land. Maybe it had better water, et cetera. Uh, there could have been a lot of reasons. But in Texas, basically the suggestion is, land is for oil and gas development and so therefore if you bought the those 10 acres even though it's from a common lease we're not going to share all that oil and gas with everybody on the lease the lease is effectively for purposes of royalty distribution subdivided at that point because we're not going to apportion or share with everybody on the uh, entire lease all right now one thing I want you to think about that is from the perspective of the oil and gas company, because imagine again, you're operating a 15 acre property. You have a well on the Jaffet's 10 acres. Now you're not sharing any of the royalties with this five acre property holder. Okay, you get to keep the lease because you fulfilled the terms of the lease, but how is that property owner going to feel uh, about this circumstance? They can't lease to anybody else. They're not receiving any royalty. They are going to not be happy with you. They may try to sue you for failed, you know, failure of a covenant to uh, develop. They may say, you know, they may be more likely to go to court and say, actually, you need to drill another well, et cetera. So you can run into problems with your landowners under this non-apportionment rule. So for that reason, sometimes oil and gas companies will want an entirety clause. This is what an entirety clause says. If the lease premises shall now or hereafter be owned severally or in separate tracts, the premises nevertheless shall be developed and operated as one lease 
and all royalties accruing here under shall be treated as an entirety and shall be divided among and paid to such separate owners in the proportion that the acreage owned by each such separate owner bears to the entire leased acreage. So this entirety clause says we're going to apportion the royalties. So even if the well is on your property, just on your property, you have to share with everybody. And that can make for easier relationships with those landowners. However, the entirety clause can create certain difficulties. And we're going to talk about one that was created here in the Gilcrease Foundation versus Stanilin case. It's a Texas case from 1954. What happened? Gilcrease owns three quarter mineral interest in the Northeast tract and a one quarter mineral interest in the Northwest tract. The others own the remaining mineral interest. Gilcrease leases to Staniland for a one eighth royalty, but includes an entirety clause covering both tracts. Others lease to Staniland for, again for one eighth, but they don't have any kind of entirety clause. So what happens here is, so here's the Northwest track, here's the Northeast track, and we have, uh, for Gilcrease, it just has a one quarter interest here and a three quarters interest here. Okay. Now remember, Gilcrease has signed a entirety agreement. So for Gilcrease, to determine how much oil Gilcrease gets from this Northwest side, we actually, so here's the, here's the well, we actually have to sort of average across the two tracks and say, all right, he's gonna get one half overall, the average between those two tracks. By contrast, the other parties don't have a entirety clause. And so here, this other party is gonna get fully three quarters of that oil. The result of that is that ultimately, Stanilin is gonna to have to pay more than a one eighth royalty because it's gonna to have to pay one half of one eighth to Gilcrease, but three quarters of one eighth to the other parties. So ultimately gonna pay five fourths of that one eighth royalty, five thirty seconds, an extra 30 seconds in royalty because of this entirety clause. So the problem is although entirety clauses can help you deal with some of the pain caused by apportionment, they can still get you into trouble when you have an entirety clause with some of the owners of a well and not with other owners.